Three straight wins for the Los Angeles Lakers, and this is a big, big game. Coming into this one, these teams uh, tied in the standings as far as the playing was concerned, and people have been asking for Anthony Davis to really step it up, and boy, did he ever do that. 37 points. 14 rebounds as we take a look at the updated standings now in the West and Los Angeles now sitting at 37 and 37. You see them, they're crawling, they're waiting for LeBron James to come back. It's so tight. A couple teams lose one or two, a couple teams win one or two. The standings are so much different. And you see Dallas drop into 11 after their loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because every team, it's not like you're going to be playing teams that don't have nothing to worry about so that they might not be locked in. It's like every team you go against is fighting for something. And, and that's why you see these tight games, these close games, players playing when they might feel a little bit sore. Joel Embiid playing whenever he was questionable. You don't have any time anymore. We got eight, ten games left. And when you look at the standings, it's – it is win you have to win right now, but you also have to win, but maintain your players so that you're healthy, that when yes. you go to the playoffs, you can win still. So it's like there's this nuance right now that's happening with the NBA that, I mean, it's just fun for us. Like, we're the winners. I won yeah. being able to watch this, but it's fun to watch. You know, we were saying off camera uh, towards the end of that game with LeBron James in this lineup. Uh, this is a, a really scary team that could do some serious damage in the West. Yeah, if they make the playoffs, they're, they're set up to be productive in the playoffs. They got, they got so many different versatile pieces. They got shooters. You got LeBron James, NAD. Then you got D'Angelo Russell, who knows how to win games, is a clutch playmaker, and he's really talented. So, like, if, if, if the Lakers do make the playoffs, I see them making a lot of noise just because they're poised, they're calm, collective, and they're just ready. The storylines that have come out of that team this season. Crazy. To see where they started, to where they were in the middle. <laughs> to where they are now. Uh, a big win for them, maybe one of their biggest of the season, uh, beating OKC in this contest. Uh, it was a busy night in the NBA, 10 games. Desperate times, and for the first time in 423 days, this team is back to 500, and James, you hit it on the head, trending in the right direction. Right now, they're tied for 7-8. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would think that uh, uh, the season, you know, especially the second half, is, has unfolded, you know, kind of in, in their direction, the right way. Um, and you know, they put together some, some good basketball, a good stream of basketball, especially uh, after the trades when they brought in some, some key players, Vanderbilt and some other players uh, coming in to kind of enhance what they were doing. And AD coming back has been the difference, I think. Uh, and their defense has arrived, you know, where it was at the beginning of the season once they had it before. So, yeah, I mean, I think... You know, it's something to be said about trending in the right direction and peaking at the right time. You know, Fish, I don't – when this team was eight games under 500, it just didn't seem like there was a light at the end of the tunnel or that this would be possible. It just seemed like they were going to kind of fade away. Uh, they've been able to turn it around. you got to give them a lot of credit. Yeah, a, a ton of credit. And, you know, when you think about where they were, started to play a little bit better, and then LeBron goes down in Dallas mm – -hmm. It just felt like, okay, here we go again, you know, maybe close, but not close enough. And to their credit, to the coaching staff and everyone involved with the team, they just continued to chop wood, carry water, do their jobs on a nightly basis. With all the scrutiny and the questions, uh, they've just maintained a sense of purpose and intention with what they're doing. It's coming across in their play. They're playing team basketball. Uh, so many more guys feel, I think, confident and free to trust themselves, trust their game. We've seen Austin Reeves go to another level. Malik Beasley getting more comfortable in the Lakers uniform. Troy Brown Jr., et cetera. Dennis, to his credit, you know, he, he wanted to be, you know, back in L.A. a second time around with the Lakers. Really had done a good job. D'Angelo Russell comes in in the trade. He's back coming off the bench, and he has continued to be a pro and come in and perform well when his team needs him. Big game, James. Uh, a week ago on a Friday night, you were with us, Fish, when they lost to Dallas. Much different feeling than right now. Since that time, they've, they've won what's in front of them, right? They've won their three games in a row. Everyone's calling them must games. Pretty impressive. It has been impressive, uh, Gator. Thing, when things are going well, you know, it's, you, you can have fun. You can laugh on the bus and enjoy. But when, when, when you're up against something, that's, that's when you're – Tell who you are, you know, when, when, when you have to come together as a team despite injuries, despite players being out, and you have to 
win games. And and they've been able to do that. I, I got to tell you, this might be the toughest season that they've had where they've had to sustain. They could have easily have fallen way off somewhere and maybe not even have a chance uh, to be in the playoffs. But, you know, they grit their teeth with or without LeBron or AD, and they got the job done. And here they are, 500 with a chance to, to make something happen for themselves. Before we get to AD, I do want to show you guys the updated standings. Uh, looked like for a while there, Philly was going to actually beat the Warriors, and the Lakers would have been a half game out of six. But Steph and the fellas got it done up in the Bay Area. They go to 38 and 36, so they stay in that sixth spot. Look at the Clippers have now jumped to four, and the Suns at five. But look where the Lakers have gone to. All the way to that eighth spot with three wins in a row. They are now tied with the Timberwolves, who they will play in Minnesota at the end of the month. Remember, they have two Bulls games before that. Sunday and then out on the road to face Chicago in Chicago before going to Minnesota. The Pelicans, who were on the outside looking in, have found themselves back in the nine spot. Thunder still in ten because... The Mavericks just mm. continue to free fall, even though they got that big win against the Lakers. They are two games under 500, and the Jazz lose to the Bucks. They are 35 and 38. So the Mavs lose to Charlotte at home, lowly Charlotte. So the Lakers get a break there, and that's what this is about, taking advantage of, of, of the games that are in front of you. I love the question you asked Anthony Davis. What's the one thing offensively and defensively? And he said push the pace. When they were struggling in this game, this game they were too late getting into their stuff when they push get things moving early balls popping get ad established early they're successful yeah and it you know there were some times tonight uh in particular in that third quarter you know we felt like they were taking some quick threes you know one pass shot goes up but the team feels confident playing at that pace and so sometimes even for us outside looking in we may not like a decision that was made but the players, the coaches, they've talked about when we keep the pace up, we feel more comfortable, we feel better, we can take advantage of what our strengths are. Uh, and But playing with pace starts with getting stops, like you said. Getting stops, rebounding the basketball, and then getting out and pushing. I think one of, one of the really good things that has become consistent for these guys is they're keeping their turnovers down. When LeBron mm-hmm. first went out, Austin was getting used to handling the ball more, high turnover games. Dennis, D'Angelo getting comfortable. A few too many turnovers for the team. But they've done a good job getting those turnovers down. They're getting to the free throw line more than almost anybody in the league night in and night out. That also allows them to get their defense set. So they're taking pride defensively and then getting out in transition and playing good basketball and sharing it. That's tough, and that's without LeBron James on the floor right now. Big game, AD, when you look at the second half versus the Suns, All the way through this game, that's six quarters in a row where he was that dude and he was dominant. And at times he had to absolutely carry this team. And the minutes where he wasn't on the floor was a drastic difference. He also hit big time shots, came up with a huge offensive rebound. Um, What have you seen from him in this little stretch that we're calling must win games in terms of his leadership on the floor? Well, you just just said the word, uh, uh, Gita. I think he's learning how to be a better leader. You know, without LeBron on the floor, his sense of urgency, he realized he is the guy. And so uh, he's he's demanding the ball more, uh, going quicker when he gets a, a situation in the mid post. Uh, offensive rebounding, uh, he's one of the best offensive rebounders in traffic. He had four offensive rebounds, and he knows how to deliver once he gets it, a, bunch of, a few and ones. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he, he knows that, you know, We talked about this a few weeks ago. It's his team. I mean, even when LeBron comes back, he's going to have to continue this way. So I think his recognition when he needs to lead was key tonight. Shout out to Lonnie. As you said, Fish, at halftime, Geeter, he is a professional (laughs) basketball player. Stay ready. All right, let's get you to the highlights.